What's up guys, welcome to another video. So um, in hopes of trying to answer the numerous questions I have uh, received about how we saddle up our horses, what type of things and tech we use and how we keep them looking so good and all of these things, I figured I would try to answer all these questions here by uh, getting my next horse ready that we're going to use to film a new series for the Comfort Zone horse training video series. So we're gonna go get high and along the way I will show you and talk about all of the little things that we do here um, to get our horses tacked up and how we take care of them. So first off, our show horses, or pretty much any horse that we have in a barn, is going to spend um, at least 20 minutes a day, sometimes two times a day, with the Beamer Therapy Blanket. This is something that I am very, very fond of because it really gets the blood circula circulating in the very, very deepest, tiniest blood vessels that very few therapeutic systems are able to actually activate. And this really, really helps uh, stimulate that blood flow and get the horses feeling really good and, uh, and reduce soreness. So all our horses go on that. You know very well that I'm a very big fan of the therapy blankets such as Back on Track or the new blanket by Lemmy Cell, uh, which is called the Come Best. And, and I actually like it even better because it really wraps around the horse really, really nice. Um, in the summer, it tends to be a little too hot for them, so it sort of makes them sweat. So the Back on Track may be a little bit better for hotter days, but through winter, wearing it under the sheet, the Come Best um, has a very good propriety to really get that uh, lactic acid out of the muscles and, and really reduce uh, body soreness throughout the training. So anyway, so the Beamer therapy is something that we are uh, very religious about. And now, so we're gonna go get ice and get him tacked up for the next video. So for those of you who wonder what the barn looks like, and so this, about 30 stalls in the main barn, and so, um, so we've got horses here in the middle and some horses on the edges of the barn. And the stalls on the edge are, are full stalls, so horses have no contact with one another. So when we get a new horse in the barn um, for the first couple of weeks, you know, for it to get acclimate, acclimated, that's what I would like those stalls for. Or those that are a little bit more ornery or the mares that don't like to have neighbors so much. Um, so it's a little bit safer for, them, for, for us to keep them in the full stall. But I really like my horses to have interactions with one another, especially because most of the shows we go to don't have full stalls. So it's it's important for me that they're used to that and it seems like the stallions especially since we have a lot of studs tend to you know behave a little bit better when they have interactions uh, with one another so this is ice ice just came in from Canada so ice is used to pretty cold weather he just went through a really long cold winter in Canada and now he's arriving in Texas in spring which is pretty early enough in the in the year that he's gonna get acclimated to the heat and humidity quick enough to be okay through summer but I try to not import any horses from Canada or the north in the early summer because they are still in cool weather ending a long winter and coming here and hitting that humidity in 100 degrees and I think that's really hard on them so I try to avoid that so I think this one got here in time and I think that we're going to be seeing a lot of great stuff from this horse in the uh, in the following months as I'm getting them ready to show uh, he already has a really good foundation on him but we're about to film a video series about about steering and about the type of pressure we need to apply with our hands and our legs when training because I feel like there are so many methods and ways to train horses and we talk about all these things and you know in our YouTube videos and online video series but I think ultimately the problems that people run into occasionally is because they're not quite sure about the amount of pressure to put, what type of bit to use with certain horses. If a horse is pushy and pushing down on your hand, do you need to just pull harder? You need to put more bits so that you don't have to pull hard or use more leg, a sharper spur. What are the solutions that you should go to in order to optimize performance and in order to make your job easy so that you can be as precise with your horses as possible? And I think that is probably the most unasked question, but probably the most important factors that's gonna you know that's going to impact uh, your training session so the following video that's going to be uploaded on the video series is going to be about pressure so i encourage you to go and look that up so anyways for now let's go and get him tacked up and ready for that and walk you through the process okay so first of all 
um, our cross ties in a wash rack or here in a saddle area or in my horse trailer or in anywhere pretty much that I'm going to saddle that I'm going to tie a horse to something I'm going to have to want want to have a quick release snap because this is definitely the safest things occasionally they get a little bit looser we have to replace them and then we find ourselves just like in our wash rack at the moment we have a, uh, a different type of snap which always makes me a little bit uneasy because if something happens those other snaps require some sort of give in order to be able to come undone as opposed to those where you just need to uh, snap undone so a small detail but something that can definitely save you or save a horse at some point in time if something should happen okay so I guess I'll start off with answering the question that people ask me is how do I keep we keep our horses uh, looking so good and I do get that question often especially from people who visit us here or people who see our horses online and I first I, I must tell you this is definitely a collective effort um, from you know from our assistants and my wife which take great pride in how our horses look and have put together a really good program about that so I have very little to do with that but definitely am proud of the job and work that they do what I can tell you is that first in order to have that coat really really shine we supplement our horses with a supplement uh, that is called XLEQ so I will put a link in the description down below where you can give it a try uh, this is a great supplement because it has a very potent natural source of vitamin E in it which helps distribute uh, a little bit more oxygen to the body cells of the horse which just you know helps them sort of blossom in a way and it's a very good uh, natural source of omega-3 which helps with uh, uh, natural anti-inflammation in the body so all in all a very 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 good supplement quite uh, inexpensive and really gets those horses really shining and feeling very very healthy so I recommend you trying that out. But ultimately, as far as labor and what you can do to keep your horses really shiny is if you're just going to brush the, you know, the dust off of them with a normal soft brush, this is better than nothing, I agree. But if you're going to take a curry brush or anything that will allow you to get deep into the skin and get rid of all of those little hairs and the dirt and the crust that can accumulate there, this is what's going to be the key to a really shiny coat, okay? So same thing when you're washing the horse. If you're going to be using shampoo all over the horse's body, and you use uh, just your hand to scrub on top of it that's okay but if you use something some type of glove or some type of uh, some type of, of, of something with little teeth on it that's going to help you get into onto the skin of the horse and really scrub that dirt out um, that's going to really make a big difference on how your horse your horses will shine then for sure how your horses are lit if it's a barn that is fairly dark it's hard to have it's a little bit like a flower it's hard to have a coat really blossom and shine if you're going to have your barns quite dark so I really encourage you to get your lighting way up because it's going to help you control the length of your hair because you can control when you turn them on and turn them off and how much light you have on them I think is also going to impact the look of their coat also blanketing blanketing them accordingly to the temperature is very important we have a very very strict here um, uh, order of when we put sh uh, either just a fly sheet in order to you know to have something on uh, up to a sheet or to a blanket or double with a hood and all of that stuff depending on what type of weather we have at the time. So, and on top of that, the products that you use, I think, make a very big difference. We've been, we've been using um, a product uh, called Equifuse since quite some time, and, but just recently, because we do have this type of exposure on social media where our horses really look great, uh, and we have some horses here with, uh, such as Dreamin that has very, very long mane, and so uh, that needs to be braided and needs to be you know, very well cared for. These products are very, very good at keeping our horses' um, hair very, looking very shiny and, and being very healthy through their shampoo and their shine spray. Another little thing is that most, <laughs> most often whenever we have uh, either veterinarians coming over or people looking at our horses and they run their fingers through our horses' mane and tails, I know what you want, yeah, I know what you want, uh, and they run their fingers through our horse's mane and tail, they always say, wow, how do you get your horse's uh, manes or tails so soft? And this is some product that is not equine related, and there are many glossing polish in the uh, West uh, equine industry that you can buy that I think some of them we've tested are quite comparable, but this one is very inexpensive, can be bought in a place called Sally's Beauty, and it's a glossing polish called Proclaim, and this thing is, is not greasy at all, and you put that into your horse's mane after a shampoo and conditioner, and you're going to really have this mane and tail really, really soft, not greasy, so it's not going to have dust or particles sticking to it, but it's going to remain really for the, the better part of the week. And this is something that I think that 
throughout Canada and Europe, I still have friends that ask me to ship them some occasionally because they can only get it here and they remember how great it was when they were here. So um, I encourage you to try it out and look it up. But this is definitely a little insight as to what we do and how we get um, eh, our horses so, uh, so soft and, and their mane and tail uh, remaining really healthy. Okay, so this is going to be very basic, but I guess I should mention it because these are the things that we uh, reinforce a lot, you know, with the care of our horses. And so brushing their mane and tail again, we like to have them, you know, a shampooed condition and put some Proclaim in it or any type of detangler in it in order to keep them nice and soft. But um, but when brushing them, we try to avoid just really going from the top down. And and, and I don't want to hear that so much whenever uh, brushing our horses because I feel it breaks uh, it breaks easier that way. So I like to start at the bottom, just like that, and then working my way up, you know, and because the, the, usually the tangles will happen in the bottom. So starting from the top down is going to be a good way to, to get your, your, uh, your mane or tail broke. And uh, same thing with doing the tail. If I have to, I will grab a solid hold of it like that and start at the bottom this way until I feel that I don't hear any, anything getting stuck. And then I'll feel better about going from the top down and, and, uh, and get this thing untangled. Now, <coughs> I like to keep my horses... Uh, you know, with, the, with their, their tail braided in a bundle, in a sock when I go to the horse show so that I don't have to really worry about it and I can keep it nice and clean until show time. But at home, I like to keep it open so that they can use it to switch flies away and, and such things. But when I ride, so what I like to do is I don't like to have a long braid that starts from the top and especially not the Lion King type of braid which stops here and have this fuzzy thing at the end. I just really don't like that. What I like is just to make sure that it's, uh, to make sure that it's, um, it's braided at, at least all the way, all the way to the bottom, so that um, they are, so that it keeps it a little shorter, and also that they don't step on it. This is probably the longest I'll allow a tail to be. I don't like to have it below the ankles because then backing up, they, there's always a risk that they can step on it. So what I like to do is make a short braid, maybe the last, uh, the bottom foot or foot and a half uh, of tail, is 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 making a short braid all the way to the bottom, and this way I know that I don't risk them stepping on it, and that doesn't, uh, and at the same time, their tail remains kind of as natural as it can be rather than feeling like they have a long whip that they can come around and, and whip me with if, uh, if they're unhappy with, with what I'm doing. Okay, so next, um, uh, you know, the manes will, you know, we like to have some of our horses with their mane braided, some will leave them open, but ultimately when I go ride, what I like to do is either make a small ponytail here or have a little braid made here at the, and, you know, at the bottom of the mane because the pad is going to come here and I don't really like having that hair stuck under a pad, especially if I'm going to be using a neoprene pad. So having a little braid or a little ponytail here is going to be the next step. And another thing that I think that I'm I think is a really fundamental tool for any training barn and if I you know, if I were to ever build my own barn or leave this place, uh, it would be mandatory for me to find a place that has something uh, such as this walker. Now, this walker, the horses go into the walker um, once a day for about 30 minutes. We have four programs on the system here that we can use from a easy workout, a little bit harder workout where they'll be walking, then trotting, then trotting faster, then back to a walk, then trotting again. We have a broodmare program that we call it. This one is going to be walk only various spaces of walk for about 30 minutes and we have another program that's going to be um, for the stallions which is a little bit of a faster pace uh, but again not going to be a workout in the in the winter it's good to get uh, to get them moving to blow off some steam and get the fresh out of them in a in a good solid workout in the summer when it's really hot then we're going to keep the uh, the exercise at about 20 to 30 minutes maximum and i'm going to prefer my horses just walk but i think that this is a very good recipe in keeping your horses joints inflammation free and your horses healthy because 30 minutes of walk a day i believe is as um is as as good uh, or the equivalent of, uh, of an actual injection. So knock on wood, we very, very rarely, if ever, have to inject our horses. And I give all of the credit to uh, a solid, nice 30 minute walk a day and a magic supplement such as XL supplement. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.